All right, hello everyone. This is Chris Judge uh, with the Archaeological Society of South Carolina, uh, conducting a series of interviews for South Carolina Archaeology Month 2020 with uh, our state's leading, what we call avocational archaeologists, folks who uh, they were smart enough to have a real job in the daytime and uh, do archaeology as, a, as an aside. Uh, today, I, I have my good friend, Chief Lamar Nelson, with me. Uh, Lamar is the chief of the Eastern Cherokee, Southern Iroquois, United Tribes of South Carolina, uh, one of our uh, state recognized tribes in South Carolina. I want to talk to him about his uh, experience with, uh, uh, with archaeology and avocational archaeologists. And so I'll begin, Lamar, with a, a question I ask a lot of people, and that is, how did you first get interested in archaeology? Well, I first got interested because I knew that my ancestors were Native American and uh, I had been finding airheads and spear points in my dad's garden. And so I loved to read. I had been reading the 1964 World Book Encyclopedia. We didn't have Google then. So I was able to see things about archaeology and that, that World Book Encyclopedia. And I'd seen a couple of magazines that were showing people doing archaeology. So I decided to build a screen. So I took some two befores and some quarter inch mesh and made me a, a screen box and went down in the garden and started looking for arrowheads and spear points. I never found any, I'd already picked them all up. But I did find some quartz and some things like that, that some little crystals and so forth. But it got me interested in archeology span at 12 years old. And so I've sort of continued that the rest of my life. I got you. Um, so um, when did you first become involved in the um, Archaeological Society of South Carolina? It was in the 90s. It was in the uh, early 90s. I started attending the ASC meetings down in Columbia. And so uh, I was there a few years later in 1998, I believe it was. And I was talking to Nina and I told her that we needed a chapter in the upstate. And she said, well, why don't you form one? And so she gave me some information about it. I contacted some other people. And on September the 10th, 1998, which was my birthday, we had our very first meeting up here in Spartanburg County. So we've been going for over 20 years. We normally have about 15 people at our meetings. Uh, we have great speakers and it's been a fantastic group uh, and a long lasting group of the ASSC. Now, I forgot to mention that not only are you the, as you said, the founding member of the um, Upstate, but you're also a recipient of the Archaeologist of the Year Award through the Archaeological Society. Yes, that was a high honor. I was very appreciative of that honor. Yeah. So what, what kind of activities uh, are you involved in as an avocational archaeologist? Tell us what you're up to. Uh, I do a lot of different things. For, for several years, I've been doing a lot of public outreach. Uh, I do some school programs. Of course, this year, most of those got canceled. Uh, two weeks ago, I was over in uh, Lake Joe Cassie for the Joe Cassie Wild Group. It was a group of uh, kids and adults that wanted to know more about the Native Americans of the Kiowa Joe Cassie area. I took a bunch of artifacts, uh, some addles, a bow, and uh, we talked about Native American history and archeology span in that area over there, and I was explaining the different people that was in the area, all the way back to the, the archaic period where people were quite different than they were during the, the Mississippian. And of all the sites that was up and down that major river system that was over there. So I did that. Uh, I always do want to grow plantation where we set up down there and display artifacts. I have did that for 20 years. Uh, hey, good meal. I'll be at the Native American Day. Uh, this will be my 18th year over in Pickens. I'll be representing our tribe for the Native American Day over there. And I've worked on many, many archaeological sites in the last 25 years. So it's, it's been a really interesting uh, events for me. I, I've enjoyed every day of it. Tell, tell our viewers what are a few of your uh kind of most rewarding or most exciting uh, times uh, as an avocational archaeologist? Well, the most exciting one for me was in 1998, 
my son, who was a 14-year-old, he and I were walking up and down the North Tiger River here in Spartanburg County. We turned a, a bend and there was a gigantic rock shelter. I immediately saw it and it was sticking out from the bank and real close to the North Tiger River. And Daniel said to me, he had been with me on some uh, sites before. He said, Daddy, I bet you people lived under that rock. And when he said that, it just gave me cold chills. You know, I was so excited that he recognized that. And that year I started an excavation and I put in 13 one meter squares under that rock. And I've been told that it's the largest rock shelter in the upstate, uh, not counting the mountain area. And uh, we found a half of a lunate bannerstone there in one of the units. And of course we found lots of historical stuff, but we did find some woodland pottery and a couple of Mississippi and little triangulars there. So that was probably the most exciting time for me was being able to excavate and have my son there and, and do that here in Spartanburg County. Very good. My, that, I got goosebumps just thinking about that as you told the story. Um, so you mentioned Daniel as a young person. If you had some advice for someone today who was, you know, a young person like Daniel was at that point, uh, trying to get into archaeology, how would you direct them? What would be the advice you would share? I would say read as much as you can. If, if you think you like archaeology, you got to love the outdoors. Can't be afraid of bugs and spiders and worms. You're going to get dirty. It's going to be hot. It's going to be cold. But uh, it's one of these rewarding things that you will do to be able to find historical and prehistoric artifacts that are hundreds and thousands of years old and to be able to touch them and hold them and just think about the people that created those, those artifacts. But you need to read as much as you can about archaeology, volunteer, get involved, you know, work in a lab. Uh, you might want to start working in a lab, doing some cleaning of artifacts, uh, work with the people that's there, learn what those artifacts are. Once you do that, then ask some professional that's going to be on a site somewhere, ask them, can you volunteer? And most people will, will allow you to do that. You can go out and uh, do some excavations, get your hands dirty, and, and if you like it, then go for it. And um, I know that you have uh, recorded a lot of the sites that you have found. Um, uh, is the process that has recently been created for the, uh, I don't know if you've used this new form yet, but uh, you would encourage people to record their finds? Absolutely. Uh, that's one problem that we had in the past. People were afraid to record their sites. Uh, you've heard this, and I know other people have for many, many years, that if, if you've got a site and you're finding artifacts, and you let some professional know they're going to come and take your artifacts. And of course, I've told people for the last 25 years, that's not true. You know, the, the archaeologists in South Carolina want you to record those sites. They want you to let people know that they're there. You never know how important that site might be. And with all the construction and, and industry that's in South Carolina, these sites are going to get covered in concrete. They're going to get plowed up. And we need to save those sites before that happens and record this. I've told many, many people in the past, you know, if it wasn't for you finding those artifacts and recording those and putting them in, you know, for historians and archaeologists, if it wasn't for those people, we wouldn't have any museums. So you need to record these sites and get those artifacts into a museum somewhere rather than at a flea market or in a shoebox. Yes, that's right. Um, you've been very good about coming to the annual conference on South Carolina archaeology, which is held each year in February at the University in Columbia. Uh, how did you feel the first time you gave a paper? <laughs> I was extremely nervous. Yeah. I did several papers at the conference. Uh, I've been going to the conference probably 27 or 28 years. And I remember the first time I was asked to do a, a paper, I thought, oh my goodness, I don't know that I can do this. And I thought about it for a long time. And, you know, I, I did programs before where I stood up and spoke in front of groups, but not one that large. But once I did it, I was so happy that I did. 
and I've looked forward in the past to doing the other programs that I've done. It, I think that I think that everybody should take a chance at it. You know, if you've got a site and you want to talk about it, uh, volunteer, uh, write it up, and get involved in this, and stand in front of the group and yeah. and let people know what you're doing. It's exciting for everyone. I remember I was a student when I gave my first paper and I was equally as nervous. And, you know, I go to these different, you know, professional archaeology conferences. I often bump into you in the hallway. Uh, and those are so much tougher to deal with. You know, you you look up and you see somebody's name tag that you kind of admire in archaeology and their front, front row center, you know, at your paper. Uh, but the Archaeological Society is a great place to uh, share information. I think, I, I would hope that uh, we're an unassuming bunch who welcomes folk uh, like yourself to come down and, you know, take the chance, if you will, and give a paper. Well, I would say today is quite different than it was 25 years ago. Uh, the archaeologist 25 years ago was, uh, it's hard to say this, but they were not as inviting as they are today. But things have changed in the last 10 years and the archaeologists today are very welcoming they want you to get involved they're, they're willing to give you advice and to help you and that's been so helpful to me and to other people that i know and i'm glad that's happened so you so you'd encourage anybody of any age to come and give a paper yes uh you know if you feel like that you can stand up in front of a group and talk for 20 minutes then i'd say go for it you know it, it's it's good for you and it'll be good for your career in the future you know, over the years, Lamar, we've sort of had declining membership, kind of, you know, waning. You know, we used to have a very vibrant Charleston chapter, and it's kind of gone away. And then your chapter became popular, and uh, Hilton Head has become popular, uh, whereas Buford used to be popular before that. What, what would be your advice? How do, how do we kind of, you know, you can't, we have this idea as archaeologists, how we get people involved. But what would be, what would, what could we, what are a couple of things we could change that might, encourage people to, to, to join the Archaeological Society? Well, the professionals need to get involved as much as possible. And I know everybody has a job and you've got work that you need to do, but uh, take the time to volunteer, to go out and talk to youth groups, talk to uh, adult groups and public outreach, uh, explain to them what archaeology is and the, how important it is in South Carolina and across the country that we preserve these sites and you know tell these people we need everyone's help. Uh, the more people we can get involved in archaeology and in history, we can save more sites in South Carolina rather than them getting destroyed. So public outreach is the, one of the most important things that professionals can do is to uh, help South Carolina just to really save these sites. Let me ask you this, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of old school like me. Uh, this year with the COVID-19, uh, we've taken our archaeology month completely into a virtual format. Uh, do you think we're hitting more people in this manner? I mean, I, I still want to do the in-person things, but when we come, when we get out from under this cloud, uh, should we continue to, to have a virtual component? I think we should do both. Uh, Face-to-face -face meeting with somebody is really important. You can understand how they feel. Uh, they're more open, I think, to asking you questions. Uh, they'll feel more comfortable with you in a face-to-face -face meeting. So we should always continue those. You know, the conferences that we go to and the uh, archeology span that we do in the field, we should always continue that. The virtual side, it does get people uh, that's not able to travel as much as I have been able to travel. You're reaching out to those people and it's very helpful to them. So I don't think we should give up either. We should continue both of them. It'll be beneficial to all of us. Something you've touched on a couple of times is uh, uh, rapid development and uh, archeological site loss. What, what strategies do you think we could developed from the perspective of the Archaeological Society to, uh, to try to stave off this incredible, you know, when I, when I drive around the state and I see what used to be pine trees become graded, 
and the next time I go down and they've built something, and then the next time I go down, it seems like it's been there forever. I'm, I'm, I'm cognizant of the fact that a lot, like we're losing a lot. Uh, what, what's the, what, what do you think the answer is to site protection? Well, one thing I would encourage people to do, especially if you own land, uh, is to contact the DNR. Turn some of this property over to the DNR. Uh, there's, there's a lot of organizations out there that you can sort of share land with. You still own the land, but they're protecting it for you. And there's a lot of sites that we can protect by doing that. So we don't want to cover this entire state in concrete. You know, there's too many sites out there and we need to explore those sites and record them uh, for history. So I encourage people to do that. So people who have important archaeological sites should contact the uh, Heritage Trust Program of, of DNR and local land trusts and conservation banks, uh, also conservation easements and deed restrictions, uh, and try to capture some of these before they're gone forever. Huh? Yes, we got an organization here in Sparbrook County called Space. They do that. And of course, the DNR owns property here in Sparkburg County. You know, on the Packlet River, they got some of those sites down there and they're preserved and we're gonna save those sites forever. So if you've got a site on your property, it's especially a major site, let's get some of these organizations involved so that uh, some industry don't come in and, and take it over. That's right. Well, Lamar, this has been great. Any final words for our audience today? Well, I would say, you know, I think, uh, the archaeological world has changed in the last few years, and it's for the better. Uh, I've met many, many archaeologists in my life and, and the work that I have done. And, and the group of archaeologists that are coming out of schools today, and even people like yourself that are so helpful to, to the avocational archaeologist and to people that, in, including the young children, you know, that uh, might be an archeologist at some point in time. I see professional archeologists today that I remember that were young kids coming to the conferences. <laughs> and so it's starting to make me feel a little old. But, you know, I, I love archeology span and I love history. It's a passion of mine, including my Native American history. And I'm gonna work as hard as I can for the entire rest of my life promoting Native American history and archaeology and the preservation of all of our sites. And with people like yourself that will continue to help us, you know, it's, I'm very grateful for that. Well, I'm really glad to hear that the younger generation of archaeologists is coming out with uh, more of a public outreach court sort of a bent to it. And uh, I was a little kind of surprised that the old school ones from 25 years ago that I thought were kind of enlightened in public education uh, and who for their day, I think they were a little more. Uh, but it's good to see that uh, uh, the current, current generation of archaeologists have kind of embraced public education and outreach because I think you're absolutely right. The future uh, is about uh, uh, a citizenship in South Carolina who has a raised consciousness not only that these things are there, but the importance of them. And the reason uh, that we must at this juncture in time, it's almost like climate change. If we don't do something now, it's gonna to be too late. So uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts and uh, uh, thanks, for, thanks for the interview. Uh, I, I see all those books back there. I'm kind of seeing if there's any there that I haven't read yet, uh, but uh, appreciate your time today, uh, Lamar Nelson. Uh, avocational archaeologist, uh, chief of the Eastern Cherokee Southern Iroquois uh, United Tribes of South Carolina. Thank you so much for your time today. You're quite welcome.